It is Saturday and I am gonna take myself on a date. Even though I pride myself on being very like independent and good at being alone, I realized it's been a really long time since I've just spent some good old fashioned time with myself. I realized recently that I have this kind of guilt complex around actually spending time doing nice things for myself. I feel like I always have to be working towards something else, whether that is making videos, taking photos, doing my laundry, there has to be some like productivity angle to it, or I have to be doing it with somebody else. In the past, I've been through my fair share of Tinder dates, and honestly, I think part of the reason I found it so fun was that it was an excuse for me to actually relax and treat myself, because like, oh, of course I'm gonna, you know, spend 15, 20 bucks on dinner, of course I'm gonna take the night off, of course I'm gonna stay up till like 3 a.m because I'm on a date with somebody. Obviously, of course, I enjoy getting to know people too, but I don't know, it gave me this excuse to actually fucking relax for once. Something I've been thinking about recently is, I guess, feeling afraid to lose myself in a relationship. When you spend that much time with somebody, it can be so easy to slip into a pattern of, you know, every weekend or every free weeknight is kind of like reserved for that person. At every concert or movie or new restaurant that you want to try out, also feels like it has to be experienced with that person. And of course, those things are great to experience with somebody else, but sometimes I feel like I put my life on hold a little bit too much for a relationship and I need to feel confident again doing stuff by myself. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm aware this is a little bit offbeat, is going to an open house. Do I have the intent of actually buying this house? No. Do I have the money to afford real estate in Los Angeles? Absolutely fucking not. But I have this kind of addiction to Zillow and every single morning I check all of the beautiful houses that are available in LA and just like dream about living there. So I've never been to an open house before. Honestly, I don't know whether it's rude to show up and not actually intend to buy the place, but like I just want to see it because it's a really adorable house and maybe like 50 years from now I'll finally be able to afford to live there. So yeah, that's what we're doing now. After circling outside the house for like 15 minutes trying to work up the nerve to actually go inside, I finally conquered my fear and checked the place out. Turns out I was the only person there, which was what I was afraid of, but the real estate agent was actually really nice and even showed me what renovations some of the neighbors had done with their similar houses. All of this is probably sounding like the weirdest, geekiest shit, like why the hell would you actually spend your Saturday looking at old houses, Ashley? But like, I don't know, it makes me really happy. I like looking at real estate. Okay, I just got back from the open house and honestly, it was kind of a fun time because I'm just like a nerd for real estate and I want to learn more about it. But yeah, it really was not as scary as I thought. Next, I'm going to go to a plant store. Yes, I have so many fucking plants in my apartment. I think I have over 50 at this point, but going to this plant the store is like my happy place. Sleep in the cardboard, the newspaper I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it seems I was late to deliver his car key. So it looks like we are staying This is what I want my apartment to look like one day, by the way. Just pure, <laughs> unadulterated plant. Right now, I am just sitting in a random corner of my favorite plant store. This is Mickey Higgerty Plants, I believe is how you call it. This is my favorite little plant shop in Hollywood. I stop by here every time I go to Home Depot because it's on the way, and also just other times when I'm not going to Home Depot and I like to indulge my unhealthy obsession with buying plants. Even though I love living in LA, I think living in a city and not being around nature does end up taking its toll. When I was growing up in Maryland, all I wanted to do was move to a city to be surrounded by buildings, and recently I went home and realized how much fucking green I was surrounded by my entire childhood. There's just forest everywhere everywhere where I grew up. So coming here is kind of like a two-in-one. It's my retail therapy, and it's also a dose of my little nature, quiet oasis in the city. I was late to the parlor when the wind blew forward. I wanted cactuses for my apartment for so long because I think they're so adorable. But my apartment has one north-facing window and it doesn't get any direct sunlight. So I'm afraid my cactuses would shrivel away. Honestly, it's probably for the best anyway because knowing how fucking clumsy I am, I would probably like trip and fall and prick myself on my own fucking cactus. Every heart will be broken. Prophetic poems spoken from the mouths of every baby to be born. I'm letting you too. Okay, what I actually came here to get are some carnivorous plants because while I was gone in New York, I think the flies like bred in my apartment. That is partially or completely my fault for forgetting to wash the dishes before I left for two weeks to go to New York. And when I came back, 
all of the flies were munching on my dishes. Yes, I am incredibly bad at being a real adult. So anyways, I'm gonna get some pitcher plants, which will hopefully eat all of my flies. Sorry. <laughs> That's the picture plant as well. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I was like, it's so late. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is definitely the biggest one, but it doesn't have any pictures yet. So, yeah. I think we might be in this. On vacation, I got all these flies in my apartment because I forgot to wash the dishes. So now I'm just buying plants until they, they eat all of them. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I always pass the store and think it's the most absurd thing. It is an entire like 2,000 square foot store that only sells food for dogs. Call yourself a free spirit, a wild thing, and you're terrified somebody's gonna stick you in a cage. Maybe you're already in that cage and build it yourself. Next, I headed to The Grove, which is an outdoor shopping mall in LA, so bougie that they play Michael Buble all year round, even when it's not Christmas. The reason they come here is not even necessarily to buy stuff anymore because honestly buying stuff in person like makes me really anxious for some reason. I like being able to deliberate my decisions online, which apparently also applies to my dating life. But anyways, mostly I come here just to ogle it stuff. The thing that's crazy to me is growing up in Maryland, the fanciest brand that our Nordstrom had was like Michael Kors and that was only for the bougiest of bougie people. People are so fucking rich in LA that the Nordstrom carries like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, all of these fancy ass brands but hi oh hi can i get a phone yeah yeah sure so like the fashion nerd i am i kind of just go to look at designer shoes and geek out about them and like take photos of them and then dream about one day if i had my own shoe line how i would design shoes with like similar elements here's a quick peek into my fashion obsessed brain as i shop around for shoes so I was inspired by the shape of this funky bendy heel. I always love a good ankle strap, but I love how this heel also flares out at the bottom. Apparently I'm really into cool heel shapes nowadays. These shoes would be so cute with like tan or white socks underneath and like a corduroy skirt if they didn't cost 845 fucking dollars. I love the vintage wallpaper-esque floral lining on these shoes. This is such a cool color combination. I love the exaggerated bows on these shoes. And oh my gosh, the silhouette of these boots. I don't even know how to put it into words, but the tight angle, the chunky heel, I don't know, they're just such a cool silhouette. Oh, I didn't see you there. Welcome to my kitchen. It is just about dinner time and I am one hungry, hungry hippo. Originally, I was gonna go and take myself to a restaurant because I think it's really stigmatized to eat alone at a sit-down restaurant and I wanted to show you guys that that's totally okay to do. But honestly, today I just didn't feel like eating out. First of all, I didn't wanna spend like $25 on a meal in LA at a nice restaurant. And second of all, after I go outside for a couple hours, I kinda just wanna be alone and like recharge in the silence of my apartment. So yeah, I'm gonna get cooking. I'm gonna drink some wine, put on a playlist, I decided to go for my leftover mango champagne from last night. Mmm. Gourmet. Is that an oaky undertone? It wouldn't be cooking with me if the fire alarm didn't go off at least once. Hello and welcome to my romantic dinner for one. I have this delicious meal of chicken with vegetables that are both just seasoned with salt and pepper and I got real fancy and I threw on one splash of pre-packaged lemon juice. I would have done more, but I didn't want to embarrass Gordon Ramsay by completely outdoing his chef skills. Real talk, can we appreciate how much this looks like at the stock photo on the menus of Red Robin? I even lit this fresh linen candle for the full effect. Nothing says romance like the smell of laundry. And my wine pairing with this fine, fine meal is Charles Shaw White Zindaffle, aka Two Buck Chuck, that literally costs $2.99 from Trader Joe's, which is the closest I can get to alcoholic Capri Sun, my drink of choice. So I thought over dinner we might wanna get to know each other a little bit, you know? So all of today I've kind of been thinking about relationships and my relationship with myself. You know, I feel like it's such a prevalent idea in media and movies and TV shows that 
It's not okay to be alone, especially as a woman. I know that idea is so outdated and we all know that we do not need no man, but sometimes I doubt whether we actually believe that, you know? It's like, oh, you don't need a man, but you should be panicked if you're over 30 and you haven't married and settled down and have kids yet, because then what is the fucking point of your body if it can't produce children anymore? I don't know, it just sucks that... I feel like women are taught that we're less valuable on our own. In high school, I was very, very focused on getting good grades and getting into a college. But once I got to college, I honestly have been kind of boy crazy for the past like three years. Part of it was just not having that many friends in college. So Tinder has always been like a really easy way for me to meet people. And part of it was even at the age of 18, when I was a freshman in college, feeling like my clock was running out. I'm feeling this panic that, oh, if I don't meet anybody in college, that's where people meet each other. I'm already in college. I already should be dating somebody. And if I can't date somebody at 18, then who the fuck would ever marry me? You know, even at 21 now, I can't help feeling like I only have a certain number of good years, you know, before I need to settle down and find the one. I think part of what's really harmful is the way that this like dance of dating and marriage is phrased as if a woman has to like trick a guy into marrying her or like hunt one down because it's so rare that a guy would want to marry you instead of just fuck you, you know? And I really used to buy into that. You know, I was so excited to date anyone just to go on a date because I felt like by default, by being myself, I guess, that I wasn't worthy of other people's love or attention. And if somebody gave me a chance, then I was lucky to have it. I don't know, realizing that you're worthy of love can take a long time. I think I'm still getting there, but... Okay, anyways, I'm gonna eat my dinner now. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the evening and I am going to the Bank of California Stadium, which means no, I am not watching a football game. I am watching a Mumford and Sons concert, like the hipster piece of trash that I am. Oh yes. I've only gone to three concerts in my entire life and this is going to be my third one. So I'm very, very, very excited. Fun story about buying these tickets actually. Um, I got them on a whim while I was drunk and I thought that Mumford and Sons was the Lumineers and I was like, holy shit, like how are these Lumineers tickets only 50 bucks? Turns out, it's because it's fucking Mumford & Sons. By the time I woke up the next morning, it was too late to get them refunded. So I did listen to the entire Mumford & Sons album on the way over and like it smashes. Honestly, it's kind of better than the Lumineers album. Hot take. Sometimes it's like someone took a knife, baby, a jean doll, and cut a six inch valley through the middle of my soul. And at night I wake up with a sheet soaking wet and a freight train running through the middle of my head. Only you can cool my desire. So I just got out of the concert. It was really, really good. They are absolutely one of those bands that has the chops to sound better in person than they do on the record. Honestly, going to a concert alone is not intimidating at all. The people next to me absolutely did not give a shit that I was there alone. And also, bawling my eyes out for like half of the concert. I am coming across so emo in this video, but concerts have always been kind of like a spiritual experience for me. I mean, I'm not religious or spiritual at all, but they make me feel the feelings. Let's just say that. I also just really love something about I guess feeling like anonymous in a crowd, not in like a creepy way, but that's why I've always loved New York so much is that you're surrounded by people, but like absolutely none of them know who you are and you'll probably never see them again. And I don't know, I think there's something beautiful about that. I don't know, I guess it's exhausting to be seen all the time. And it's sometimes nice to just feel like you disappear a little bit. Of course I say that as I'm talking to a camera, to like millions of people online, but you know. I forgot to film an outro that night because I just went to Popeyes, bought a 10 piece bucket of chicken, ate it in my car on the way home and then passed the fuck out. But yeah, that was my whole day. I genuinely had a lot of fun that day and it was a really good reminder that, I don't know, I have fun by myself. I like hanging out with myself. I hope this video shows you guys that anything that you can do with a boyfriend or with a friend or a girlfriend, you can also do by yourself, except maybe procreate, but Actually, medical technology is working on that one too. So, there's nothing you can't do on your own. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.